Welcome to Gabriel. This always was, always will be Aboriginal land. Thank you and have a wonderful day. And the key thing about moral injury is people develop narratives, they develop stories where it's all my fault or it's all someone else's fault. And that leads them to have these festering negative emotions and thoughts. There's a hot, so much in there I'm going to take back to my workplace, just checking in with a colleague, but also the, just saying, are you fine? And leaving it at, at, that, at that is not enough. It's made me think about what more we can do in our team to help protect ourselves from the trauma of our jobs. Is, um, is actually a, a, a real barrier um, in functioning effectively um, in, in that kind of senior leadership role. Uh, they were talking a lot about the strengths and weaknesses that have made them either good at their job or that they've had to adapt. And I, it was definitely making me think about, I need to sit down and work out what my strengths and weaknesses are. I, I loved the idea of inclusive and collaborative leadership that gets that diversity of experience within a team. We need to have a standardised language to for, for, for AI and intelligent systems to talk to each other. I was stunned at the pace of change that's occurring around us and just thinking about the implications for how we're going to integrate that technology into medical practice. The overwhelming thing about it was that um, it, there was no fear, there was no concern about uh, AI, which many of us have. What I wanted to do was actually to break down the barriers. It is accessible, it is something that we're all going to have to face. Uh, whether it's from the doctor side or from the patient side. Because we're not really sure what the surgeon wants, a lot of that stuff goes straight in the bin. So we're wasting between 40 and $80 per procedure. And I think a real takeaway for me was that um, it's actually not too late to do something to address, address the issue. But we have the power in our own hands, in our daily practices and conditions, to cut our carbon footprint. Um, we're both public health physicians, so we're already um, pretty across, you know, the health impacts of climate change. But it, it's great to just keep um, refreshing it, keep learning about it, um, and make sure that everything we do in our day-to-day -day practice actually addresses climate change. You, you come to congresses like this to actually learn that sort of stuff. So 